Dear listeners and watchers, um, I have a fantastic guest tonight, and I am Desiree Rover. I'm a medical research journalist, and that is the way I found out that we live in a world of lies. And my guest is Lorraine Moray, and she is a geoscientist and nuclear whistleblower. Whoa! And she knows almost everything about everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is how it feels for me. You have terrific... A lot of subjects, and tonight we are going to cover some of them also. Uh, but anyway, Lorraine, dear friend, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very, very much, Desiree, and um, I don't know the name of our producer, but thank you so much for putting this opportunity together and making it possible to reach the public. Well, thank you in the name of Piggy Ball and Mel. Thank you. Okay, uh, we had a list. You gave me a little list of uh, possible mm -hmm. subjects. I mean, uh, we fly every which way always, so we just start somewhere and see where it goes, as usual. Huh? Yes. Um, but there is two things that I'm, uh, three things that I'm, I'm specifically curious about that you mentioned, and that is nuclear polar vortexes. Yes. Fukushima that has that is connected, I suppose. Yes. And also the Wigner effects on planes crashing globally. Yes. Oops. So um, I don't know what the best order of thing is. Uh, first Fukushima and then the nuclear polar vortex and the Wigner effects. That that I suppose is the best order. And then so, the health effects also. Yes. So, uh, oh yeah, give my love to Larry, by the way. I will, thank you. You're welcome. He says thank you. And, um, okay, the floor is yours. Ah, uh, my name is Loren Murray. I'm a geoscientist, and um, I also am a wildlife specialist. I'm an archaeologist and anthropologist also on the um, ancient history of Central Asia and the Middle East. And um, because of my unique background and experiences, uh, one of them is that I've never had a television. I wanted to go and see everything myself. So I've been to 50 countries. Um, and traveling with a purpose is the best education you can possibly get. The university is the library. It's not the professors and students in the class. The university is the library, and the university is experiences in traveling and talking to people and seeing it for yourself. Not everyone has that opportunity, but with the internet and with uh, stations or programs like this to give people like us opportunities to talk about things that are not covered in the mainstream media, it's possible today to um, educate the public about things that uh, they absolutely need to know about. It's mandatory because their lives are on the line. We are being globally attacked with a nuclear war that started in the 1940s with the Manhattan Project and even before that. So. <coughs> Many people are not aware of that history. It's not their fault. It's not even uh, uh, exposed to the public except compartmentalized. And because I have a geoscience background, we use all the tools of all the sciences of uh, social and political uh, realm also. And, um, and actually, in the end, you realize that everything is connected. Uh, our that health... Is, that is the point, right? Uh, yes. Lauren, that you need to have overview. Yes. And not just focus on one thing. It is always embedded in a whole series of other stuff. That's correct. Yeah. And um, um, the uh, United States in the universities, in the medical profession, 
um, in the, the political realm. Uh, they never associate public health with the environment because our nuclear weapons program completely contaminated the United States population and everyone living here from bomb testing, which started in 1952 in the continental U.S. and Nevada at the Nevada test site, and it went on until 1963. There's no nation more nuclear bombed than the United States. 1,300 nuclear bomb tests were done in Nevada, and every living thing in the United States and beyond, because the winds carry it beyond the borders, um, has been contaminated by nuclear bomb testing, by the U.S., by the Soviets, by the French in North Africa, in the Sahel Desert, um, by the Chinese, by the Japanese. The Japanese had a nuclear weapons program, and um, they did successfully detonate a nuclear bomb about three days after Nagasaki. And um, what people don't know is that the Jesuits, who are the army of the Catholic Church, or I should say, they're the army and the Catholic Church is under them, um, they are not religious people. They are amoral, they are anti-religion, and they are the ruling Jesuits at the very top are ancient Iranian tribes that are still in control of this entire planet. <coughs> and <clears throat> some of the things I'm going to say today are startling, but I have the correct background. I have traveled. I've lived in Iran. I married an Iranian. Um, I have uh, learned Middle Persian and Elamite. Those are Persian languages. And um, I've translated cuneiform bricks uh, during my studies. And um, so when I talk about something, when I, when I say something, it may sound outlandish, it may sound outrageous. But believe me, they are outrageous. They are outlandish. And the scheme they have for the human race and for this planet defies all fantasies, all science fiction, but it's our reality, and it's all true. Yes, I know, uh, and I once read the ultimate oath of the Jesuits. The energy that is in that document, it's unbelievable. They are out to kill and cull everything and everybody. And that's, uh, yes, go ahead. Well, it, it, it has this, it, it breathes the same energy as the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud. That's where it came from. Yeah. And, and from the Kabbalah, the mm -hmm. Talmud and the Kabbalah, which are satanic, perverted, Mesopotamian, um, magic cults. Yeah. And it's actually the ancient Iranian tribes from Central Asia, from Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, who um, adopted those beliefs in order to give themselves an, an advantage over all other living things. Over, and I mean living things. Wildlife, bacteria, everything. They've used everything. And... Um, it's um, some of these, um, I'm going to just give you an example of some of these people who we know are part of those ancient Iranian tribes that secretly control the world. And they have very, very strict breeding programs. I'm talking about going back two and three and four and five thousand years. They've had very strict breeding programs. Um, the Pahlavi. Uh, tribe of eastern Iran is a very ancient tribe and the Shah Reza Pahlavi is from he was from that tribe and he was chosen his father was put in as um, a dictator 
um, or this the first shot, first Pallavi shot, or whatever, by the Pallavicini Italian family that runs the world with the Breakspear family in England. And she, at the end of Pallavi, means the stock, the blood stock, or the DNA stock, or the hereditary uh, stock origin of these people. Um, so that's the Pallavi tribe represented by the Shah of Iran and they used him because the Jesuits want to control all energy sources they used the Shah of Iran to set up and to take over the oil company of Iran because Iran has a lot of oil and it's very very good oil and um, and uh, another family is the Farnese family. And Farnese is from Fars, an original ancient city in Iran. Uh, about 1,500 years ago, the Uzbek and Tajik tribes moved west into Iran and into Cappadocia, which is eastern Turkey. And um, they set up the Parthian uh, Empire. And uh, the Medicis, the Medici, famous Medici family, those are the Medes, M-E-D-E-S, the ancient, extremely cruel Iranian tribe that set up the first Persian Empire. And so these same people uh, have very pure bloodlines. Their marriages are carefully planned. They live in huge, luxurious palaces in Venice, in Florence, in Rome, all over Italy, the Italians are primarily Iranians. And it's no accident that the colors of the Italian flag, red, green, and white, are the same colors of the Iranian flag, the flag of Iran. So it's hidden in plain sight. So it's hidden in plain sight. You know how to look. Yes, and for instance, they set up Christianity. They set up the Vatican. They were the popes. And um, if you've ever noticed, uh, the popes have that uh, big domed hat with um, um, decorate, decorative elements on it. And that is from the pounded felt tradition of the Scythians and the Central Asians, the Iranian tribes. And uh, if a woman wears that, they have a specially shaped one for the woman. She is the head of uh, all the women in that tribe and that tribe. And these are matriarchies. The women make the decisions. They choose the marital partners. They, uh, they uh, choose the women for the harem the harem of the Shah. Uh, they make the decisions because the woman is the most important part of the breeding program. All of the, most of the DNA and certainly the DNA and RNA for the mitochondria that provide, provide all the energy for the body come from the female only. And, yeah, that's, yeah. and we know from that DNA in the, in the mitochondria that um, all of the Indians of North, Central, and South America are Mongolians and they came from 20 women who crossed the land bridge from Siberia and came into North America and they populated with the men in the tribe all of the Americas. Talk about connecting the dots here. And the Navajo Indians who live in the southwestern U.S. and New Mexico and Arizona, they can still speak Mongolian. Their language is still very close to Mongolia, Mongolian in Asia, and they can speak to each other. I wow. also, yes, and I also went to Myanmar and I discovered that the people of Myanmar um, can speak to Japanese because it's nearly the same language. And that means there are many Iranian influences and tribes 
who escaped from uh, Central Asia and the Middle East and went to Japan. And it's the Iranian tribes, the Parthians, or the Parsis of India. Uh, the Parthians, uh, they're hidden in Japan, but they build all the temples, the Buddhist and the um, Shinto temples in Japan. And it's because they want to control religion because they control the people by controlling religion. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, the Elder Brandinis, the Chigis who run the Vatican Bank, um, all these families are all related. Uh, they've intermarried. Uh, the whole Habsburg Empire was set up and created by them. That was another breeding program. Uh, so there's a very long ancient history, and it's very relevant today because they're still in charge. Fidel Castro is a Farnese. He has Habsburg lips from Philip I or Philip II or one of the Iranian kings uh, who were Habsburg kings of Spain. Uh, so it's it's also I discovered that um, Ataturk and um, Ataturk and Stalin were Iranians, and their mothers came from the province of Gilan in the southwest corner of the Caspian Sea region, just over the Elbrus Mountains from uh, Tehran. So uh, people we know today and we know as world leaders and, and world clowns on the, the political stage, all kinds of things, they're actually ruling the world from ancient Iran. And from ancient bloodlines. And how do the Jews figure in all this? Well, what happened is the, um, the Medes, the, the Mede people, are especially, especially cruel. They were always cruel. And they had a king named King Tikrit. And uh, we know Tikrit because that's where Saddam Hussein was found and supposedly murdered uh, when the uh, 2003 Gulf War progressed. Well, um, I'm sorry, what did you just ask me? I lost my train of thought. I asked how the Jews are figuring ah. in what what the Medes did, these very ancient people, is they were Uzbek and they used Tajiks, uh, the Iranian tribes, to uh, create victim populations. And they converted a lot of the Tajiks to Judaism. And that is so the Tajiks, as Jews, would carry out the Zionist Iranian agenda, and they would be blamed for it. The Jews would be blamed for it. But they're not Jews. They're Iranians. And over and over and over again, people say that um, Ataturk was a Jew. He wasn't a, two, a Jew. He was an Iranian. And um, they use religions to hide behind and conceal who they really are. But they're Zoroastrian Mithra worshippers. <laughs> and uh, the Par Parnasi or Farnese family of Italy, um, they burned down the new capital of Canada during the, 18 the War of 1812. And the very next day, they were burned down Washington, D.C., the new capital of the new country of America. And uh, they burned down both capitals. They owned the land or bought it, and they rebuilt those cities with all the signs of symbols that were important to them. So you see the hat of Mithra, statues of Mithra, um, all over Washington, D.C., and paintings with President George Washington, President Lincoln. All the signs and symbols are there, and the Pentagon, the world's capital, military gangster headquarters, which is controlled by the Farnese family still. They built the Pentagon, and they built it in the 1940s, or right after uh, World War II was over, 
It's um, octagon shaped, five sided, and it is an exact replica of the Villa Farnese in Capitola, 50 miles north of Rome, that Pope Paul III built in the 1500s. Well, he's the one who started the Jesuits. And the Villa Farnese was the headquarters of the Jesuits, and it's all war rooms. It's five stories of war rooms. There's one room that is called the map room, and it looks like Michelangelo painted the maps in that room all over the ceilings and the walls. And there's one map uh, that shows Antarctica on it. Well, at that time, uh, when this was planned, uh, no explorers, Western explorers, European explorers, had ever heard of Antarctica or been there. And I said, where did that come from? This is when I started to get an idea that the Farnese's were not Europeans. They were something else, and they had to have ties to the Chinese. Because at that time, the Chinese had hot, gigantic ships, junks that went all over the world. They had rigid sails like the Oracle ship did in the, in the, the America's Cup races a year and a half ago in the San Francisco Bay. And um, they had been to Antarctica. They'd explored many parts of the world before the West even got out of the Stone Age. Whoa, uh, that's a whole different perspective and much yes. deeper than I ever heard before. Thank you. Yes. And I'll have to look into that to get really the hang of it because we have been misled by so many stories about how reality is. I knew it is totally different from what we are being told, but you give such a beautiful outline. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So the, um, these uh, Persians or Iranian tribes were ruthless. They still are. They are practicing exactly the same culture, they, they tribal culture they had before. And actually many of the stories in the Bible reflect these battles, this ruthlessness, this uh, complete destruction and land grabs and the destruction of all religious idols salting the ground and everything after they conquer a country. So I call it the Jesuit Minuet. And the Jesuit Minuet is first the Jesuits embrace, then the Jesuits enfold, and then the Jesuits exterminate. They completely genocide the people, and then they completely destroy the environment. So those peoples or that tribe or that region or that city or whatever uh, will hopefully not revive itself. It sounds like a satanic predator. That's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. And when uh, another thing that these tribes do is they intermarry with royal families. And as soon as the children are born, the heirs to the land, to the um, to the um, uh, the mineral rights and things like that, whatever a sovereign uh, ruler is entitled to. Um, as soon as they get the children, and it's usually a, a woman, a female, who is the Iranian uh, part of the pair, um, they murder the king and she becomes the regent for the children and rules with advisors until her children are of age to yes. take the throne. And um, I am directly descended from Henry the Fourth, the first Bourbon king. My family were Huguenots, French Huguenots, and I was named for the nephew of Henry the Fourth. If I was alive at that time, Henry the Fourth would have been my uncle. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he uh, was, uh, he married uh, Valois first, uh, the 
the reign or the, the bloodline prior to his bloodline. They ran out of heirs, so because he was directly descended from Charlemagne and in the right lineage order, he was chosen uh, to be king of France, but there was a problem because he was a Huguenot. His mother, uh, Queen Jeanne d'Albray, the Queen of Navarre, was the head of the Huguenot movement in France. And, <coughs> um, and he did many, many good things uh, in terms of religious tolerance. But he married um, a distant relative, uh, this Valois, and they hated each other, and she was um, very licentious, and so, well, he was having a lot of girlfriends, too. And um, anyway, they didn't get along, so he had the marriage annulled by the Pope. And um, he had a wonderful noble woman mistress. They really loved each other. Even when she was pregnant, she went on the battlefield with him and slept in his tent and took care of him. And um, then she, um, she was poisoned by Marie de Medici, who wanted her daughter to be Henry's wife. And uh, Jeanne del Rey did not want her son to marry a Medici. So Marie de Medici murdered Jeanne del Rey. And then Marie de Medici murdered uh, Henry the Fourth. And that's what the Jesuits do. They love poisons. So the chemtrails in the sky are one of their poisons. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the whole HARP project, tectonic nuclear warfare, where they're, they're using HARP to uh, disperse horrible nuclear and chemical poisons into the atmosphere and the oceans and poison everything. Uh, Everything they do is to give them an advantage and to uh, e e to omit all competition. So if you're a threat, you're going to die. If you get in their way, you're going to die. And um, this is uh, what they did is when um, when the uh, these Iranian tribes wanted to take control. Well, they actually set up the Roman Empire. They were the senators, and they um, were the administrators and the rulers and so forth. And um, when the Roman, the Eastern Roman Empire collapsed in the 1400s, these Iranian families who run the top of the Jesuit structure and the Catholic Church, they... Um, wanted to reassemble the Roman Empire. So they called it the Holy Roman Empire, and they uh, created a very strict breeding program. The popes always decided and approved any marriages between royal families in Europe, so there would be no, no inbreeding, which is very bad for a bloodline. So, um, so they did exactly the opposite uh, to create the Habsburg Empire. We, they created the Habsburg Empire by marriages, uh, and in doing that, they recreated the Roman Empire and called it the Holy Roman Empire. But what happened is uh, the popes approved uncles marrying nieces and first cousins intermarrying. And so the Habsburg Empire bloodlines, or the cadet families, never lasted more than 200 years because they were so inbred, they were unhealthy, they were infertile, they were mentally ill, uh, they were droolers, they had all kinds of physical problems, and they did not thrive. But all these marriages to recreate the Habsburg Empire were to unite families with land holdings that had originally been part of the Holy Roman Empire, and that would be Portugal, Spain, uh, parts of Germany, Prussia, um, Austria, Italy, uh, parts of Yugoslavia, and it's a whole belt 
of a kingdom <clears throat> that goes entirely across uh, your, uh, parts of Eurasia even and down into the Mediterranean. And today, the Habsburg Empire is, if you look at the wind map and you look at, at um, uh, changes in the weather and everything, you can see that the whole Habsburg Empire is heated up using HARP when radiation plumes from Fukushima are directed into Central Asia, into Europe, the Mediterranean, and these polar vortexes are sent into the Arctic and they come down the Atlantic Ocean and they're being used to contaminate uh, targeted populations like in the Baltic states. Iceland, they're punishing Iceland for throwing out the, the Rothschild bankers, so they're getting heavy doses of Fukushima radiation. They're exterminating the Icelandic people. Scandinavia, parts of Scandinavia, um, and um, especially the Mediterranean countries and Central Asia and the Middle East. Now, Putin and the Chinese are also heating up Russia and China to prevent Fukushima radiation plumes from being directed into those regions. And um, on this wind map, you can see the high pressure zones. And for the last two months, the Habsburg Empire has had almost no radiation at all, continuously, which indicates they've been doing it since Fukushima started. And people ask me all the time, their favorite question is, but how do they protect themselves from being contaminated and why aren't they dying and killed too? Well, they have all these super that they came up with and other governments um, created. It's really a joint Cold War uh, project that created HARP and it was a project involving the Soviet Union and the U.S. Secretly, Russia and the U.S. always have been and always will be the greatest of friends. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And it's because the three strongest Christian nations in the world are Russia, um, Russia, um, the U.S., and Germany. And that's why Russia and Germany were targeted for genocide in World Wars One and Two. It was to kill the ethnic Christian Russians and Germans because the Jesuits want to bring everyone, all religions, they want to destroy them and bring everyone under the Catholic Church, which they control. Yes, they are still out to create one world religion and, and that's one world government. Catholicism, and it'll be administered by the Jesuits. Yeah, and the... the the Pope of today, uh, Franciscus, um, I have no way of verifying it, but I heard that he has been used to rewrite the biography of our Queen, Maxima. Of course. Uh, in order for her to be able to marry with Willem Alexander. Well, she has a bloodline they wanted, and the reason they married him to her is because Holland, the famous uh, country of the Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company, which were created by the Jesuits, um, and the East India Company of England was also created by the Jesuits, um, they, uh, they do not have claims to the mineral resources in the Antarctic. The Antarctic is two supercontinents that are welded right down the middle, and there's tremendous mineral wealth there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, and so the war over the Falklands Islands, which belong to Argentina structurally and legally and in every other way, traditionally, uh, the British grab those because it is part of the ancient Gondwana land, the huge landmass in the Antarctic, and it gives them mineral rights to Antarctica. Well, they also have them through 
Australia, New Zealand, Tasmania, um, and probably South Africa. But they want more. So they waged the Falklands War and did a land grab on Argentina. But uh, there's a new world order emerging. Uh, Putin is uh, leading it with the BRICS Bank, which is on a gold standard. And he has uh, brought together, uh, BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, uh, India, uh, China. China, and uh, and uh, South, South Africa. South Africa, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, Argentina, when they solved their problems with the international bankers, the IMF, they refused to, to pay them back. Um, and they shouldn't. Uh, they will also be uh, members, a member of the BRICS. But there are many other smaller countries that are part of BRICS. And what's actually happening with the Ukraine crisis is that the U.S. is sending illegal weapons of mass destruction, military advisors, encouragement to the psychopaths who are running the junta in, in Kiev and illegally overthrew the government. They're an illegal government. Yanukovych was legitimately elected. And um, so what has happened is in collusion, the U.S., uh, and this would be uh, President Obama, Secretary of State uh, John Kerry, uh, Under Secretary of State for the Ukrainian and Eastern European region, Victoria Nuland, very dangerous person, and um, Ambassador Payat, the American ambassador in the Ukraine, overthrew Yanukovych. It was the CIA that did that, and George Soros through his Orange Revolution. And um, the uh, Ukraine situation uh, resulted, uh, when that overthrow happened, in the Cossacks, mostly these are traditional Central Asian nomadic uh, equestrian warriors. Um, they they own much of the Ukraine. They've lived there 20,000 years. Um, and they uh, picked up 40 Kalashnikovs, old Kalashnikovs, 50 of them did, and they started a um, separatist movement in eastern um, Ukraine called Nova Russia, New Russia. It's the Donbass, the, the, the Donbass and the Lugansk regions south of Kharkov. And that started in March or April uh, of a year ago. And uh, they have absolutely slaughtered and defeated multiple times the Ukrainian military. And... Um, they now have over 50% of the Ukrainian military completely surrounded in cauldrons where they're cleaning them out and eliminating them. Um, and Putin is involved. And what my prediction is, um, well, Putin wasn't happy about it because he doesn't want NATO taking over Russia and the Siberian and Arctic oil and gas fields, which is what their, their, their entire aim is. And of course, this is all for the Jesuits. Obama is Jesuit trained. 10% of Congress, U.S. Congress is Jesuit trained. All seven of Obama's intelligence advisors are all Catholics and Jesuit trained. You cannot believe how what's happened in California we have a Jesuit priest, Jerry Brown, who's the governor of California for the third time. And he will run a fourth time also. And um, uh, Janet Napolitano is Jesuit trained. Uh, Leon uh, Panetta, who was the head, he was the Secretary of Transportation under Clinton. Well, Clinton was all about drugs and heroin and flying them into the MENA airport to pay back so China could pay back the Rockefellers for loans they borrowed to uh, modernize China. And um, then Panetta moved to a uh, head of the CIA under Obama. Well, 
the CIA was started by the Jesuits, Obama's Jesuit trained, uh, Panetta's Jesuit trained. They all, Jerry Brown, Panetta, and Janet Napolitano, who was head of Homeland Security, which is the Jesuit Gestapo, they all went to the same California Jesuit University together. And, um, and then Leon Panetta was then, when he left as chief of the CIA, he went to, um, uh, Obama appointed him to be Secretary of Defense. Well, the, the Defense Department is all involved in the drug, dr global drug racket, and the Jesuits run the whole global drug racket and human trafficking. So all those pedophile parties and human hunting parties that uh, Prince Friso attended with his wife Mabel, Princess Mabel, and um, the Dutch royals were involved with, Queen Elizabeth and, and Prince Philip were involved in these hunting human hunting parties. Uh, they were in Belgium with, with King Albert of Belgium on his private estates. They were on uh, Queen uh, Beatrice's private estates. Um, it's, it's how they control these people. It's with blackmail. Yeah, I know. That is, that is totally clear. And what you see about the, the, the American Jesuits, so to speak, is uh, they, they have all the same code. And yes, it's a template. They, it's a template. Yeah. And, and they have this, this, this play yes. that we cannot interpre interpret uh, in the right way because we missed the key of the cryptogram. That's right. But now you give us that key yes. so we can look at it in a different way and understand better what is happening. Yeah. And the children that were provided to King Albert and the royals for these royal hunting parties where they would chase them naked through woods and shoot them and kill them, cut their penises off. And in one of Queen Beatrice's palaces or castles, um, these penises are nailed onto a wall as a collection trophy room. And um, it's the uh, Nudrangheta, an Italian mafia based at the, um, the, the, the boot, the, down at the boot of, uh, of um, Italy, right on the Mediterranean, and Leon Panetta's mother and father came from the village that is the headquarters for the Nadrangheta. Every male in a village, uh, a mafia village, it's mandatory that they're a member of that mafia. So, uh, Leon Panetta's father and mother were sent to Monterey, which is Navy and military and international headquarters for intelligence agencies south of San Francisco. And they opened 11 restaurants, and, um, and P Leon Panetta ended up in politics. He was in Congress for many years. Uh, then he was uh, the Secretary of Transportation, the head of the CIA, and Secretary of Defense. And what he was doing was actually modernizing and setting up the Nidrangheta as the single global uh, organized crime mafia that uh, will rule the world along with the New World Order. The Nidrangheta procured uh, teenage uh, girls and boys to be parties, to be used in these hunting parties. And uh, that's all very, very well documented and well known. And um, the the uh, name Panetta is not the real family name of Leon Panetta. He's Iranian. He's from these Iranian tribes. And I knew that he has an Uzbek nose. I checked with my Persian friends. They said, "Oh my God, you're right. He's an Uzbek." He has an Uzbek nose. Yes, you're right. And then I also saw the Persian eyes in just the right photo when he was in just the right mood. And um, so he, his family name is actually a Habsburg royal family name. So he's a Habsburg. 
Yes, there is no coincidence that the people in power are the people in power because they belong to these sorts of families. And it's all the old boys club. So That's right. And yeah. just to give you an idea of how intermarried and interlocked the royal families of Europe are, Henry IV, uh, his children married, they were married into, he was murdered, and then his wife, Medici married off the children into bloodlines all over Europe. Um, and through Henry IV, I am related to 68 kings of Europe. That's the legacy of Henry IV through those Iranian bloodlines that were married in by murdering the legitimate uh, boar bones. Oh, wow. Well, I will, in the future, will call you my queen. No, no. I'm a citizen no. scientist. I'm not interested. I know. I'm just joking. In, in sovereign rulers, I'm a, opposed to it, and my family left France. The Dutch East India Company evacuated the uh, persecuted uh, uh, Huguenots, especially after Cardinal Richelieu uh, slaughtered them at the um, the uh, Saint Rochelle, the the big uh, battle there. And um, I thank the Dutch uh, for my life, really, the the life of my family. And um, the Huguenots came to. North America, they went all over the world, but 150,000 Huguenots made huge contributions to the birth of uh, the United States. And of course, uh, General Lafayette, uh, the Marquis de Lafayette from France, um, he is one of the main reasons that the Americans won the, the, uh, the war, the Revolutionary War. Uh -huh. yeah. So many people helped us. Um, it's uh, how the Rothschilds also got started. Uh, the Rothschilds, Amstelmeyer Rothschild, their name is Bauer, actually, they, their original name. And, Frankfurt. and yes, from Frankfurt, from Hudenstrasse, Jew Street. And uh, they intermarried right away with the shifts. And... Um, uh, it was uh, Meyer Amstel Rothschild who went to the Prince of Hesse and arranged for mercenary Hesse Hessian soldiers to be rented to the British king, uh, George, and uh, sent to America. They were the Redcoats, and um, they lost the war. Uh, the guerrilla warfare and General Lafayette, the, the guerrilla warfare carried out by the colonials, and uh, the Marquis de Lafayette are the reasons that uh, the United States exists. Okay. Well, we share something in our background because my paternal grandmother was called Pans, and she was originally a Huguenot also from France. Yes, from France. So yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of Huguenots ended up in. Um, uh, Berlin. I mean, they went all over the world, many, many places, and they made huge contributions. Um, my family, I'm Huguenot on two sides, on my mother's side. Uh, one of them is the Alice family, and they were sheriffs of London uh, when they left France, and then they came to the United States, and my great uncle started the Alice Chalmers Company. His name is Ellis, and he had a partner named Chalmers. And so they were um, also, it's very big industrialists in the United States. But I um, believe in simple living, uh, live with less so that, so that others can live. And even though the Huguenots embraced and Quakers in England, uh, capitalism, they realized that if they had more, someone else had to have less. So they rejected capitalism and adopted austerity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. So and, uh, each of these countries, uh, Holland has a dark side and it has a light side. 
England has a dark side and it has a light side. But yeah. the dark side is always associated with the Jesuits. And many people left Europe, uh, the strongest ones are the ones with means and resources, or they came as indentured servants. Some came as slaves on slave ships. But they left Europe to get away from the Jesuits. And by the 1800s, 98 countries in Europe had rejected the Jesuits and prohibited them from operating in their countries because they completely destroyed them. And it's Jesuits that are destroying the Ukraine right now. It's yeah. the Jesuits who set up the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. A hundred million ethnic Christian Russians, white Russians, were murdered yeah, by the Bolsheviks. Many, many, many millions, yes, yes. absolutely. And yeah. it was to destroy the Eastern Orthodox Christian Church because they refused to submit to the Pope in Rome. Yeah. Yeah, that is why I don't like religion, because so many bad things are happening in the name of religion that I don't want to have, to have anything to do with that. Well, um, spirituality is what is really important. And spirituality yes. of a person, of a people, of a tribe, of whatever, um, a, a religious group or whatever, but that is a power that's much greater than any military power. And we see repeated over and over again the Hezbollah in Lebanon, a prehistoric, very ancient tribal uh, area and region. On my father's side, they came from Palestine. And the Knights Templars brought them back to Europe to uh, make the Knights Templars very, very rich. They set up hospitals. There were no hospitals in Europe. This is in the 1100s, in the 1200s, over a thousand years ago. Um, they set up banking. They set up the whole infrastructure of Europe. And it took that ancient knowledge from the Middle East and Central Asia that the uh, Middle Easterners had to teach the Europeans how to be civilized, and they still aren't very civilized. The Central Asians and the uh, Middle Easterners are far more civilized and made huge contributions to civilization, to mathematics, to music, to um, science, to medicine, um, and over and over again, they've been purged and genocided and, and their libraries did stolen and, and destroyed. But it was by those ancient Iranian tribes who later on rebranded themselves over and over and over again for over thousands of years. Uh, and after the collapse of the, um, the Eastern Roman Empire, they rebranded themselves as the Jesuits and started all over again. And the, the modern Western culture, I mean, cool in Dutch means nothing. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, you can do a wordplay, culture. Yes. Um, that is going on in terms of the, the depraved sexuality and all that sort of thing. Um, is that a Jesuit? Uh, yes. Generated? Yes. yes. Uh, Yes. Degradation yes. of civilization. Yes, I did an interview on the Ukraine and uh, MH17. It's on my website, lorenmaray.info. And in the index, you can find that interview, which is illustrated. And I have images from the Tower of Babel, which I wanted to tell the history and go back to the Sumerian and Elamite period. So the people understood that what's happening in the Ukraine has a very long history. And, um, and there are actual statements from the Kabbalah, from the Talmud, that say um, uh, people should have sex with children who are eight or younger. Um, people uh, should kill all Christians. Um, this and that and so forth and so on. It's all very, very perverted and very destructive. 
and that's uh, a satanic perverted form of magic cults that were incorporated by the Jesuits into this perverted uh, Judaism, which is satanic Judaism. It is not Judaism. The Torah is Judaism. And, um, and that's how the Jesuits created an inbred uh, uh, victim race, the Tajiks, called them Jews, and, um, and then used them as Jews to do these uh, Zionist schemes that the Jesuits come up with all over the world. And this is centuries and centuries and centuries. And it was the marriage of the Parthian Empire when it collapsed, I'm sorry, just one thing I forgot to say, to Alexander the Great. That was the marriage of the new Greek dynasty to the old uh, uh, defeated Parthian dynasty in Iran. And as soon as Alexander had children with that queen, with his Iranian queen, uh, she murdered Alexander the Great. And his bloodline is the bloodline of many of these uh, Iranian families that are in power as the top level of the Jesuits. Okay, and how does the Khazarian Jew story uh, come into all this? Well, these Jews, um, they also in the Kabbalah and the Talmud, um, the Kabbalah and the, um, yes, the Talmud, they no, this what the rabbis has, yes, have said. They are told to lie. They can lie. Yeah, uh, they yeah. take the Kelnitter uh, oath every year, and they're absolved of any yeah, harm. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, and they're they're told to lie about anything uh, that that promotes them or makes them richer or whatever at the expense of other people. And they are horrific predators of their own Jewish people. Yeah. So, um, it's it's yeah. this victim population was created by inbreeding in the the ghettos, the Jewish ghettos, and the um, the gulags and so forth, and um, and they are sent in. They have no allegiance to any country they're born in. Um, they are born Jews, and they uh, supposedly did not want to assimilate. The Khazars did not want to assimilate with Russia and become Christians, or assimilate with um, the Middle East, which was being taken over by the Islamic religion. So, uh, supposedly, they uh, joined... Uh, this Kabbalah uh, Talmud satanic practice uh, that they call Judaism, but that's not what it is. And it's occultism, and um, and they um, they uh, are actually the victimizers. They're used by the Jesuits as the victimizers. For instance, the Bolsheviks, all of the top leadership of the Bolsheviks, almost were Ashkenaz Jews from Brooklyn, and they were funded by the Rothschilds and the Schiffs. Yeah. So um, that's who it was that the Jesuits are behind them. So it was the Jesuits who had all these Russian ethnic Eastern uh, Christians murdered. Well, it's because they want to bring in, they want to bring them under the satanic forms of the, of the Vatican, the Catholic Church. And uh, that's what's happening in the Ukraine now. They're exterminating the ethnic Russians in the Ukraine and the highest number uh, or concentration of that population starts in the east and it, it diminishes as you go west across the Ukraine and more and more ethnic Ukrainians who are from the eastern Ukrainian church that is under the Pope, so they're not being prosecuted. It's the ethnic Christian Russians who traditionally were not under the Pope. Oh, well. Yeah, well, 
not many people know this and they should to understand the big the bigger picture of what is going on there right now.